Welcome back to Keeping It Normal with Emily. There you get more cheesy basement dancing to no music because um, I film that without any music, add the music in later. Uh, welcome to episode six. I can't even believe I'm saying that. Episode six of Keeping It Normal. I have a guest tonight. It is, I'm saying tonight because I film this after my children go to bed, but I have a guest, Shauna, Shauna the mom on most of her socials. She is so much fun. We are social media friends. We met on social media. We did an event together last summer called Hot Mom Summer. She is lovely. And she is a mom of two content creator, stay-at-home mom, who also battled breast cancer last year. And I was wondering if she would be open to talking about that experience. And she was amazing and said yes. And then told me that she has never talked to anybody at length about her breast cancer journey before. So I felt so honored that she trusted me with the conversation. There's a couple moments. Um, I, I film these intros, by the way, after I've had the conversation. So there are a couple moments that just like my jaw dropped during this conversation. And she is lovely and wonderful. And I definitely think you will, even if you cannot relate to the topic at all, there are still bits of advice and wisdom in this conversation that you will walk away better from hearing. So let's dive right in to talking with Shauna. Everybody, welcome Shauna to the podcast. Yay. I'm so excited. I'm so excited I'm, you're here, friend. Yay. I'm so to be here, friend. Honestly, I'm I'm honored. But um, I want you to introduce yourself just in case everyone should know who you are, in my opinion. But if they don't, <laughs> introduce yourself to the people. <laughs> okay, I'm Shauna. I'm Shauna the Mom on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. I just recently moved over there too. Um, nice. Yeah, I do uh, comedy videos about being a mom. That's how I got mm -hmm, started, mm -hmm. at least. And then um, some people might know me, too, from my journey through breast cancer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I followed, I discovered you on TikTok. When did you join TikTok, by the way? Ooh, okay, so that's foggy because I joined TikTok <laughs> and I threw a couple videos up. Um, yeah. And then I immediately stopped d putting videos up because I was like, this, <laughs> this app is hilarious. Um, yeah. And I, at the time when I joined, there was so much creativity and so many people were doing skits and everyone was doing yeah. dances. Everyone was doing um, the <laughs> Savage. Savage was when yeah. I joined. Everyone was doing Savage. And so I just got so swept up in watching TikTok for hours yeah. and hours and laughing. Um, so I didn't start actively posting until like, I think it was like the end of 2021. Okay. So you were, like were December. you like in the pandemic boom, as I like to call it? Yes. I moved yeah. over like um, at the very start of the pandemic. So I had a friend that was like, Shauna, you need to move to TikTok. And That's what she was like, your content needs to be on TikTok. And I was yeah. like, what is TikTok? I'm not doing that. I don't even know what that is. Thanks, Grace. Yeah. Shout out to Grace. <laughs> Thanks, and <then> Grace. <laughs> and then so I finally um, downloaded the app and I put, I had made a parody video um, to uh, Bad Guy from Billie Eilish, by Billie Eilish. Yes. Um, I made, uh, it was called I'm the uh, Snack Guy. I'm the Snack Guy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and so I put that like in parts because you could only upload a minute. So I put like three, part one, part two, and part three on TikTok. And um, it got like 300 views. And that was like more than I had ever gotten on either of the platforms. And I was like, oh my God, this is where it's at. <laughs> well, now you have quite a, quite a following. Yeah more, yeah, yeah, more now. Yeah, more now. And um, so you've been on the app for yeah. That's how I found you. Was your funny? Uh, I think it was like um, I want to say it was. She does these skits where it's like a mom at the park. Oh, okay, and, yeah. Um, 
yeah, different versions of like moms at the park, but it was like, I, I can't even remember actually like the exact example, but she, do, you do these funny skits of like these moms at the park. And I was like, that is me. I am that mom <laughs> at the park, like the socially awkward. Being very awkward, trying yeah, really like, hard to make a friend. Me. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you are so, and you still do the most hilarious skits. Thanks. Thanks, girl. And then a little into my journey with following you, you made a video about how you found out you had cancer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I was like holy crap that My, is insane me too <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um I do I mean I want to talk about that because it's uh well a because I have to say I'm very honored because you you have told me before this interview that you have not talked about this really in at length with anyone no I haven't so I thank you for like trusting me with the conversation oh uh, you're welcome. And, Thank yeah, you for, but I thank you for wanting to have the conversation. Yeah, I just I think it's it's a lot of people go through it. A lot of families go through it. A lot of moms go through it. And yeah. I don't feel like it's, you know, it's not really talked about. And it's just kind of focused on let's get you better and and thankfully you did and we'll talk about that, but I think that's the focus is like let's just, you know, get into this, we'll get you better and then no one really talks about like, whoa, I just went through some shit, <laughs> some heavy That's shit. Very true. Yeah. And so, yeah. So I, so let's get into it a little bit with, um, what type of cancer did you have and how did you discover you had it? Okay. Uh, well it was triple negative breast cancer. Um, what does that mean? Yeah, I don't even know. That means <laughs> uh, I know a little bit, no. but I okay. don't know a whole lot because um sure. because at some point they said, "Okay, this this is curable. This is treatable, curable." Okay. And so then I just stuck my fingers in my ears and went la 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 yep. la, la, la la like through okay. treatment. Um <laughs> right. So so triple negative breast cancer is super aggressive. I know that. And okay. um it means that it is negative for hormone receptors. So like okay. breast cancer, um, you know, women, women in our hormones, it can like an overproduction of the hormones or whatever can grow the cancer, I guess. Oh, um, okay. So I didn't have that kind. I had like, okay. it was, it's negative for all of the hormones and uh, it's kind of like you grew cancer. We don't know why. So how did you discover that you had it? I was standing in my mirror, getting ready to get in the shower, um, stripped down naked. And I was checking myself out in okay. the mirror and going like this and like, you know, feeling my boobs. And, yeah. you know, you just kind of like um, look at yourself and you're like, shh. Should I get a tummy tuck? <laughs> Do I need a boob lift? Is yeah. this still hot? You Lifting know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And so like I was literally like I was grabbing my boobs and then I went like this to turn to get into the shower. And as I dropped my tits and my hand went <laughs> like smooshed across it, um, yeah. I just felt something and I was like, that's that's mm. weird. What is that? And it didn't feel like a lump, like um, okay. what you might think a lump would feel like under some skin. It just felt like I couldn't isolate anything. It just felt like a um, um, the the skin, the the tissue right there seemed thick, thicker mm. in in this yeah. one spot. And over, I was kind of like poking and prodding all around it. And was like, mm -hmm. that's, that's different. That's new. I ran downstairs and had my husband feel and he was like, oh yeah, that is definitely. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. So I called my OB, um, their office and they got me right in the next day. Wow. And, um, <laughs> I went in and my OB felt, and he also was like, I can't isolate. It doesn't feel like a lump. I don't yeah. think it's a lump. And, um, mm. he kind of felt something over here too, on the other side and the other boob. And, um, he was like, I think it's just like normal cystic changes that you would have with your period. We could watch it. You're young. Yeah. We could watch it and just, just see what happens when, you know, through your next cycle. 
um, I could send you for a mammogram. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I would rather go for the mammogram and just see, um, yeah. just to make sure. And he, when I said that, he was like, yeah, you know what? You're right. Absolutely. Let's just send you just in case. And then mm-hmm. I got to the mammogram and it was a mammogram and an ultrasound, which I'd never done before because I wasn't old enough yet to go for mammograms. Right. Right. And um, so they went and like squished my boob and the whole time I'm going, you know, it's probably just cystic changes right. <laughs> for my right. cycle. And they, t- they were taking um, pictures and then she stepped out and she was like, I'll be right back. And she stepped out and she was not right back. She, I was in there for like several minutes by myself. And I was like, that's not a good sign. Not and then good. she came back in and she was like, we need to take a couple more images. And so I was like, Ooh. that's also not good. Um, so they took some more. They adjusted me and like got me in the exact right position they wanted to get. Yeah. And then took some more images. Uh, and then they had me go over for the ultrasound. And they were being really super careful with the ultrasound too. And um it ultrasound just like you would have on your belly when you're pregnant. Same yeah. thing with the goop and the little wand and yeah. the little computer screen. And um uh the radiologist came over <laughs> when the ultrasound was done and she was like, My concern is that uh it is cancer, so I want you to have a biopsy. Ooh. And I was like it's probably not though, right? And she was like, <laughs> my wow. concern is that it is. And I was like, yeah, but it's, I mean, but could it be trauma? Like from running yeah. without a sports bra? Cause I chased my kids around and yeah. she was like, it could be, <laughs> but I'd like you to have a biopsy. Oof. Yeah. And then, uh, and then I went for the biopsy, all of this, like, staggered this was like weeks in between so I had time to like um panic (laughs) oh yeah so my mind would be (laughs) all over the place panic yeah I would vacillate between panic and then putting it out of my mind completely so that I could get my day completed yeah do do my daily tasks um but when I went in for the ultrasound they thought that I mean sorry the biopsy when I went in for the biopsy, they thought that I had a mass on this side and two littler masses on this other side. So a mass on the right side and two littler masses on the left side. They thought the mass on the right side was a cyst mm. uh, and they were concerned about the two on the left. And so they shoot like a giant, like a giant ear piercing gun. Oh, they shoot it like clicks and everything. Um, so a giant gu- gun, they shoot it in, um, and it like thunk. <laughs> so it sounds like in everything. Exactly what it <laughs> <laughs> they exactly shoot like funny. like a hollow little arrow oh. in, oh. and then they pull it out, and it um, it gets a chunk of whatever they're shooting it at. So in my case, a tumor. Um, but they shot it into this one thinking it was a cyst. And so mm. it was just going to pop and it did not pop and their mm. faces fell. And I was like, Oh, that's not good. That's not that's good. Not good either. <laughs> None of this is good news. Not and good. then my doctor, um, to the very next day, my doctor, uh, my OB called the one who had said, it's probably nothing. Um, yeah. called and was like, it is in fact cancer that is happening. Wow. And do you have, is there, is it like, um, uh, in your family at all, or was this just so, so crazy. It's such a crazy thing. Um, no zero okay. in my family, zero, oh. none at all in my family. Um, but that is because my dad, uh, did not grow up in his with knowing his like biological father okay he knew who he was but like he was not in the picture so that whole side of the family was not in the picture um and it turns out i have have a a genetic mutation from my dad 
from his dad, from that side of the family. Yeah. Yeah. So it didn't present in, in anyone. Um, like my dad has two sisters and two brothers. Um, and it, and I have a whole bunch of female cousins on that side and it hasn't presented in anyone, but me crazy. It's crazy. Genetics are crazy. (laughs) It's very true. And you have, you have kids. Yeah. How many kids do you have? Two kids. And what, how old are they? They are now seven and three. And how old were they when all of this happened? Cause this was a little while ago. Yeah. Um, they were, um, they were four turning five and okay. one, one turning two. Little kids. Yeah. Little kids. And so, well, you, you've already mentioned, so you find out you have cancer and then how soon are they like, but don't worry, it's curable. Oof. Uh, two whole weeks. Oh. Two whole weeks not knowing no. what the fuck was happening. <laughs> two weeks that you knew you had cancer, but you had no idea what was coming next? Yeah. Did you have any other symptoms before you found the lump no. in your breast? No. Wow. Yeah, because uh, the type of cancer that was growing was not, um, first of all, it hadn't spread anywhere else. It was just... Right. Um, I had one in this boob and one in that boob and they right. grew independently of each other. So the boobs weren't talking to each other. I just had wow. like a cancerous mass grow here and cancerous mass, two little ones <laughs> grow on like, this side. Check, check your boobs. boobs. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you should is... get familiar with your boobs. Yes. Well, everyone should please start doing that if you're not already. Yeah. But wow. So that's okay. So super rare, fun genetic mutation <laughs> you got lucked out with. Boobies <laughs> just having their own similar thoughts, but not communicating. <laughs> yeah. That is okay. So, I mean, I, okay. So you're, I know like, it's hey. kind of, it's crazy to wrap your mind around. It and I really even, is. I went into the informational session with um, my breast surgeon. Um, yeah. And that was the person that was breaking down all of the information about what was going on for me, um, okay. which she did beautifully and shout out to Dr. King in Austin, Texas. Cause she's rad. Um, but so she, um, so one of the first things that she said when she sat me down was this is crazy. Yeah. You developed triple negative breast cancer in both breasts simultaneously in independently of one another. Um, it's rare. It's like, it doesn't, it doesn't really happen. It's more common to get, um, one type of cancer in this boob and then a different type of cancer in this boob than it is to get what I had. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Very crazy. And, And so they say, yep, you have cancer. And then Mm -hmm. for two weeks, (laughs) <laughs> you just have to live with that, not knowing what happened. So, well, yeah. that's like the worst two week wait of all time, isn't it? Yeah. What, yeah, what is going through? Terrible. What is good? Cause I may <laughs> like, I will spiral. No. So like what, what goes through your mind? You just found out you have cancer. You don't know what's going on for two whole weeks. Where does, I mean, what were, how did you get through that? All right. Don't hate me. The first thing that I thought of was, um, oh, thank freaking God. Um, it, it seemed like the hugest wake up call, uh, that I've ever experienced. Like, okay. um, it was, so I was really, really grateful that, um, this was happening. It felt like some sort of, um, I don't divine shakeup. Um, okay. And it always felt, even before I had the information, it always felt, it always felt like I, I just knew that it was okay. 
and going to be okay and okay. was like a big life lesson. There was no like I mean was there fear or was there was there always kind of like not not a peaceful feeling but of like no this is going to be okay this is happening for a reason. I don't know what that reason is but there was there were both you know how okay. like in motherhood you can both be completely in love with your baby and also hate yeah. that this is fucking happening yes. um yeah. so there there was a tremendous um amount of of peace with the knowledge that all would be well um okay. and i'm spiritual so i prayed immediately oh um, yeah yeah and throughout like you know immediately when i felt it uh, on yeah. the way to the OB, like throughout the whole um, diagnosis process, mm -hmm. um, I I was having a tete a tete with the yeah. Lord um, yeah. or the universe or whatever you want to call it. But right. so there was always that sense that um, there's a higher purpose here. Okay. And at the same time, you hear the word cancer. Yeah. That is really scary. Yeah. And you've got two little babies. Yeah. That is really scary. That really is scary. really super scary. Yeah. So um I was really grateful. Um I was I was happily in the moment in those two weeks. Um yeah. my kids seemed more like even cuter, um yeah. sweeter. Yeah. Uh their <laughs> their their squabbles with each other were um uh less like nails on a chalkboard to my ears yeah my husband uh you know I, I felt more in love with my husband yeah so I tried to be really in the moment um and then of course you know then you like also dip into fear and like being yeah. terribly afraid and the what ifs I didn't google right. or Ugh. anything I don't want to know no, uh, good. I, I don't want to know. That never ends well. Mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> nope. Nope. And I didn't know what it was either. So there was no way to know. I didn't know right. that it was triple negative yet. Um, right. I only knew that, yes, cancer. Yeah. So you just kind of yeah. cope. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so about two weeks in, into it, is that when they tell you this is what it is, but but it's very curable? Yeah, so I went <laughs> I went to see my breast surgeon and that's the person who told me the ins and outs of what was what it was. Yeah. And I just I I said hello to her and hi nice to meet you and she was yeah. like do you have any questions and I was like no just lay it, lay it out give it to me straight yeah. doc and um the second that she started talking I went oh! <laughs> And I was just this like sobbing, blubbering yeah. mess. And yeah. we had masks on because, you know, COVID. So I'm... like all she sees is my oh. eyes just like eyes. <laughs> puffy and red and crying and I'm just bawling. Oh. And so she's giving me the information and she's telling me. And some of the stuff that she was telling me was like, you know, it's pretty good news um, as yeah. far as cancer goes. But like it's not in my lymph nodes. Um Right. It's isolated to the breasts. Um, yeah. It is, uh, it's not the hormone kinds. So, you know, they don't have to put me into um, menopause necessarily. Um, right. You know, so some of the things were like, this is like fairly good news. Right. And, and I was just like, <laughs> all of it sounded scary and too real yeah. and too too much for me to handle in the moment. And so um, the, by the end of that appointment, after she had given all of the information, I like had a little tissue and I went, okay, well, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> and she, and then she looked at me and she went, this is treatable. This is curable. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So she could tell clearly that I wasn't getting what it was that she was saying. Yeah. Um, She's like, no, this is, this is going to be this okay. Is okay. <laughs> this is all right. So what made you decide to 
share this because you shared pretty much right away on social media like this is happening what may i think you know you very easily could have not made content or whatever but what made you decide to kind of in a way document this journey on social media with everyone that's a really good question um it didn't occur to me to not <laughs> I was in the habit of oh. posting skits every day. So I I committed to it. I'm posting every day. And yeah. then um, this came up and I didn't have a skit that day because my mind was crazy. And I right. was like, it was the day that I was going to go for the mammogram. And I was like, I'm sure I'll think of a skit at some point during the day. And I just, nothing was coming. And so I just like popped on and was like, hi, I don't have a skit today because I'm going to go for a mammogram. So uh, yeah. squeeze your boobies. Um, and then, and then I felt like it was necessary to give an update. People were like, right. like, Ooh, how'd that go? Are you okay? Everything will right. go okay. Um, right. And so then it, I was like, well, they're sending me for a biopsy. So I don't, I, it's not nothing, but it's not, not nothing. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and then, yeah. And then it came the, out that it was. And I was like, well, it is. And then, <laughs> and then I got good people. news. Yeah. Yeah. I just sort of snowballed. It just, I just, it just kept, I kept feeling compelled to share um, yeah. And then when I was, um, when I did share, um, everyone was so incredibly supportive Yeah, and it turned out to be like the most massive blessing that I ever, I didn't even know that I needed. Um, yeah. and, and more than I ever could have hoped for from anyone. And it was just yeah. like an outpouring of love um from all across the world all the time and yeah that is it was really ugh, cool. it was so fortifying through the process yeah. <laughs> what did Came your back. uh your treatment then look like because it is curable but what did you have to do it's to curable cure it? yeah so i did uh chemotherapy um yeah. it was 20 weeks of chemotherapy the first 8 weeks was um uh, like the big doozy, like the biggest, okay. baddest kind of chemo, apparently. Yeah. So I did chemo and, um, uh, uh, it, it makes you lose your hair. It does. It yeah. does. So it, my hair all fell out. Yeah. And I also and then, gained what? like 30 oh. pounds doing is chemo. Is that, is that just a side, I'm not familiar. Is that a side effect? A typical side effect of chemo is weight, like you gain weight? Well, um, it's a side effect. Yeah. I okay. think that people probably associate chemo and cancer, uh, with like losing a ton of weight and like looking really sickly and getting really, yeah, uh, yeah skeletal, yeah. um, that, that happens probably pretty frequently because chemo, um, it can do a lot of things to you, but like among, among them, it can make you really nauseous right. and really nauseated. Um, it can uh, change your, like the taste in your mouth. Um, oh. So some people, yeah, some people get like terrible uh, mouth sores with it. And so it's mm. hard to like eat and swallow, uh, right. terrible burning sensation, like in the throat, stuff like that. So that'll make you obviously not want to eat and then you lose a ton of weight. Um, mm. I didn't have any of those problems. And oh, wanted um, comfort food. Yeah. And so yeah. I ate a lot of carbs, a lot of noodles, a lot of like yeah. soup with noodles in it. I was like, uh, you just get through, you know? And so, yeah. yeah, I put on a lot of weight. And how does that, how were you, because you've got two young kids at home. Was your husband during all this, was he working full time? Was he able to stay home? What did that? situation look like? Cause I don't know. So he, he was off, um, every infusion day. So okay. it, for, I had my infusions on Tuesdays. So every Tuesday right. for those 20 weeks, um, he was off when he was working. I 
was a stay at home mom. Um, yeah. So I had my one year old. She turned two during the process. So yeah. I had my two year old um, at home with me. And then my, yeah. And then my four year old, who turned five in the process, um, right. was in school. <laughs> so you were parenting a toddler during a pandemic while battling cancer. Yeah. Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I was tired. <laughs> yeah. How does one, like, I can't even wrap my head. Like, I mean, I guess you had to have just get, like you said, just gotten through. It just doesn't even seem possible. Like, was it just pure, like survival mode for you? Yes, it was, yeah. but not in a flight or fight kind of a way. Okay. Um, in, probably in the fawn response kind of a way. Yeah. I, um, it just kind of, it is what it is. Right. And, um, so you just do what you can. Right. So on days that I felt okay, um, we would go on walks and play right. and, um, do all the normal toddler activities. Right. And on days when I was really tired or otherwise not feeling well, um, I laid on the couch and yeah. would read a book to her if she would tolerate that. Or right. we did a lot of screen time. Um, Heck yeah. Yeah. We did a lot of like going out in the backyard and I would just sit there and she right. would, you know, tool around. And it's really funny because, you know, that second kid, the first kid you're so concerned about everything. And oh, yeah. I hated taking him into the backyard because like, <laughs> oh, what if he got bit by a spider? And like, I just right. so, so, so silly. Um, and oh gosh. And that girl got my second board. My daughter got zero supervision. She got like <laughs> full rate. I mean, I was there. I was present. But right. she she was vibe, allowed to do anything <laughs> in that yeah. backyard. She could dig yeah. in the mud. She could roll in the mud. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. And so you did your chemotherapy. And then how does that work? So you complete your chemotherapy. And then do they – how long after that do they say, okay, let's check again? Or did they have to remove something? Or what did that look like? Yeah. After chemo is surgery for me. Okay. Um, And – uh, it was up to me if I wanted to do a lumpectomy where they like take the tumor itself out or if I wanted to do a mastectomy where they take all of the breast tissue. Right. Um, and I opted for double mastectomy. Um, okay. If I didn't go that route, then yeah. I would need follow up like MRIs, mammograms or MRIs uh, every six months. Okay. I was um, going to ask you. Yeah. Uh, but with the the mastectomy, there's no breast tissue to be MRIing, so um, I still right. go in every six months or so. Um, okay. Uh, and but they just do like a a physical exam. And did you did you struggle with that with having your breasts removed? Was that like with your body image or? Yeah, yeah, it was all kind of one giant struggle because, like, yeah, um, yeah, I lost my hair and my right. eyebrows. It's I a gained, lot of I gained changes. like thirty pounds, yeah. <laughs> and then they cut my tits off. Yeah, um, yeah, it was all sort of uh, traumatizing. And are you um, even able to process that in real time? Or are I don't you, think so. I, yeah, I wouldn't imagine. I mean, I don't know, but I like at that rate, it's like, let's just get through this and do what I need to do. There was a lot of let's get through this. Yeah. Um, there was some processing. There was definitely grief about it. Yeah. Like it's very multi, multi-layered. Like there's that, there's the layer of grief and there's all these physical changes. And on the other hand, you're almost like grateful that things happened the way they did. It's seeming, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're almost like wrong. grateful. Yeah, for the shakeup, as you said, yeah. um, that's just a that's a, a lot of intense emotions all at one time. To try yeah, to that's navigate. very true. But Emily, I'm a Scorpio, so oh, I'm, okay, I'm so. into that. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> How long ago 
what how long ago did they say your like was your surgery and they said yep you're all clear i had the surgery in january um 2022 and okay. yeah and so when they take out the breast tissue <laughs> they kind of yeah. like flay you open and then like they like scrape the tissue off the skin like they take it all as much as they can <laughs> um yeah yeah so they sent it all to pathology to get tested and there was no cancer anywhere in any of it yeah that's yeah. right so thank you chemo um the chemo did a good job yeah um yeah so i have been it's like that makes it 15 months now 15 months cancer free and what are what are the chances of that happening again oh i have no idea Oh, sorry. I don't no. know. No, no, that's okay. But I don't, I have no idea because, okay. um, well, it was so that, rare. That's thing. not something that I, uh, like have ever looked at. I know that the odds, so I know that triple negative is a motherfucker and yeah. like, you don't want that one. I know that much. And okay. so I know that it can't, it like does come back, um, more often, I think, than like any other kind. Um, okay. But again, I have this sort of like internal knowing, mm -hmm. this this divine wisdom that says that tells me like you know it's fine. Yeah, meh, yeah, meh, 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 meh. and then also yeah. the the extreme naivete, <laughs> the. <laughs> the instinct to put my fingers in my ears and go la 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 yeah nothing is happening fine. it's fine um <laughs> and so so you know a little over a year later and you've been open about on this about this on social media too of just kind of being like finding yourself again yeah not really knowing you know discovering yourself again not really knowing necessarily which i think i mean you go through anyway as you age but you had such like an upheaval and like <laughs> a bam this happened i did i used the metaphor that like you know the snow globe of my life was turned uh, over and like yeah. shaken up and at one of those snow globes where you didn't know this until you turned it over but all of the like you know presents and the little doodads that are in there that make it look all pretty none of those yeah. were attached so all of yeah. those are now swirling around in the air. Fine. Yes, that's how it has felt. Um, I literally got my entire world shaken up, turned upside down and shaken, and yeah. then like turned back right side up again, like, okay. And then everything just had to settle. And so the yeah. emotional repercussions of going through all that um, yeah. threw me into like an identity crisis. Yeah. I would think it was so. Gnarly balls, and and like a while after it happened too, because like I said, I don't think you and you said too, you can't process that in real time. Yeah, like that, I don't think you can. <laughs> yeah, because you're not you're still immunocompromised from the from the chemo, so you're not yeah. healed. Your body's not healed for like uh, four to six months. So like, really, it wasn't. Yeah, so it wasn't until oh. it was literally like six months later. Um, so I ended up going into um uh medical menopause when i was going through chemo it shut okay. down my ovaries because the chemo attacks everything that's like a fast okay. dividing cell um mm. and the ovaries do the whole egg and the releasing and the period and the stuff um right. and so it kind of attacks your ovaries a little bit um okay. so it shut my reproductive system down mm. and six months after the chemo my hormones turned back on oh gosh. everything turned back on because my oh. body was healed enough right so it turned back yeah. on and i started to get like oh. period like pms kind of like symptoms yeah. like feels and yeah. then i was like i i think my hormones are coming back and so i yeah. went uh i went in and saw my gynecologist fancy new gynecologist now an, on, an oncological gynecologist right um and so she checked everything out and did blood work and stuff and she was like you are correct your hormones are coming back on wow um and so the 
consequence, the benefit of that was that I felt like a horny ass teenager. <laughs> so that was really fun <laughs> for like a month. Um, like puberty all over again. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. There's actually a term for it. It what? in the, in the, I know I learned this on Instagram from my, <laughs> my other, my best friends who went through breast cancer as well. Um, yeah. It's called, they call it the post chemo ho phase. <laughs> because you just want to fuck oh, all day and all night. My it's gosh. so true. Um, wow. Yeah. I had no idea that that was a thing, but something to look forward know. to. <laughs> <laughs> um, about a month after all my hormones turned back on, every single repressed trauma that mm. I had ever experienced and not Ooh. dealt with. Yeah. Ever in Ooh. my entire life from childhood. Oh no. All came screaming up to the surface all at once. Everything. Everything. Yeah. The 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 girl who bullied me in third grade. Oh God. Like um childhood like familial trauma. Like yeah. with my Just, parents. Oh my god, everything. Everything. everything and the trauma of going through cancer and like going yeah. through the treatment everything all of it wow. everything every fight i've ever had with my husband uh every fear i've ever um tucked away not examined oh my gosh everything wow and how do yeah. you i mean what do you do you get a therapist yeah you get a therapist yeah. and yeah. you and you journal a lot <laughs> And you go on a yes. lot of walks. I, I started going on a lot of walks. Yeah. Mental health walks. Um, and you journal a lot. Walks. And you and you talk to people if yeah. um, you can. Um, you yeah. know, the friends, the the people involved in the incidents, the, yeah. Um, yeah, the, your loved ones. You got, I mean, it's just like one giant lesson in um, asking for what you need. Oof. Oh Which is that, are, is that something that you might've struggled with before this? Oh yes, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. 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 I was a giant people pleaser Yeah, um, and I didn't, I didn't even know it. I thought I was like fierce, <laughs> yeah. but, but <laughs> then this happened and I was like, oh, I'm not, I'm not fierce. I'm, I'm not. fierce now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I was fierce in some regards, I suppose, because it's always been inside of me, but yeah, yeah, I was a giant people pleaser and was like yeah. bending over backward um, yeah. to make other people happy and was um, really kind of betraying myself in a lot of ways Yeah, that I had to come to terms with. So, yeah. you know, thanks cancer. Well, that's what I was, I was going to ask next is just, you know, it's, I think it's awesome that it has morphed into like this thing that you're like, no, I actually needed something like this and I'm almost like grateful it happened which like I like to look at things like that too but what are something like what is just like a couple things that you think have come that are positive out of this experience oh my gosh I mean I'm sure there's a ton everything yeah everything okay, that's like honestly okay so it sounds horrible but like if I could go back in time um yeah. And like, you know, reroute myself somehow to not do it. I wouldn't because wow. it, it has been transformative, like to my bones, to my core in, yeah. in every possible way. Like yeah. I am mentally, physically, spiritually more whole than I ever have been in my entire life. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, my relationships, all of them with everyone, yeah. um, like are, are much better, much more honest yeah. and much like entirely honest. When you face your mortality life, you yeah. come to understand uh, yeah. that life is way too, way too short. Yeah. Absolutely not. Like, no, let's, yeah. let's be real. I am, I am a night and day different than I was before all of this. I think that's beautiful, honestly. I think Thanks. that's really, I mean, that's really strong that you would say you would do it all over again. 
That's Thanks. pretty. It's powerful, Shauna. Thanks. I didn't it's think about it, that, but yeah, that's yeah. really. I mean, yeah, that's huge. That's yeah, that's really cool. That's really really cool. So all your like even your because obviously like where we talk, I talk a lot about motherhood on here, mm -hmm. and so I wondered about that. Um, like in those two weeks, like were you? Did you ever, it's a little different because you were like, you kind of felt like it was going to be okay. And then you were told it's very likely this is going to be okay. Yeah. So I don't know if you ever had that fear of like, I might die and leave my kids. Um, I had the fear um, because you have those fearful thoughts and you kind of like, you know, yeah. can, can go down that rabbit hole of spiraling yeah. like what if kind of, kind of fears. Um, right. So I had those fears happen they would come yeah. up but every time they did i would i would pray yeah um, you know talk to the universe i like to um uh i i listen to music a lot i like to listen to music and i like yeah. um like hear messages like through the music mm -hmm. music kind of speaks yeah. to me in that way yeah. um maybe it does for everyone where you where you kind of like take on a deeper meaning from the yeah. lyrics mm -hmm. um so that would happen um, yeah. And I just got like, you know, message after message and like uh, feeling after feeling that it was okay and going to be okay. Yeah. Um, so I did have those fears, but right. I never let them like take hold of me. And I never let the fact that there was cancer in there take mm -hmm. hold of me either. Um, okay. and I never claimed the cancer. Mm. I didn't ever say, I have cancer or my cancer okay. um, because it never, it wasn't mine and it, mm. I didn't have it. It never felt like that to me. It felt like there was cancer in my boobs, but it's yeah. not, it wasn't my cancer. Mm. Um, it was just like, you know, something foreign that was now leaving. Ooh, that's interesting. <laughs> mm. And did you, um, cause you said kind of like, in in those two weeks like your marriage even like is it still even like a year later like you are cancer's gone and you're on you know you're recovered and you're finding your new identity do you still find yourself like um it's helpful maybe in those moments of like when your children are squabbling that it's a little less annoying oh no you know <laughs> i mean yes or was that Yes, okay. in a bigger picture kind of sense. Yeah. Um, but there, no, it's still fucking annoying. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it, it, it's still, it's still motherhood. <laughs> but it, they are, I do every now and then go, oh man, like, you know, and I really, really tap into being in this moment with these beautiful little cherubs. Yeah. And in those moments, you kind of like, you look at their little hands, their chubby little hands yeah. and their round little faces. And they're, mm -hmm. you know, sticky, sweet breath. And like, it, you do, you, yeah. Yeah. Just try to, to be get caught up. Yeah. I think it's actually a really important thing to like, I, that I think a lot of people struggle with is actually truly being in the moment because I think so many people are like, um, worried about missing it so much hmm. that mm -hmm. they're not, that they miss it, <laughs> that, <laughs> They're like, oh my gosh, they're growing so fast. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. And it's taking away from. But like it's happening right now. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, well, just, I think it's harder, easier said than done to like truly be in that moment and yeah. cherish it for what it is. So I think that's cool that you're able to do that more Thanks. often. Than not. Thank you. Yeah. It definitely was a big wake up call um, yeah. to that end for sure. Yeah. Well. I want to, um, I do a little thing called a, an ask Emily segment. And if I have a guest, I like their, their input as well. And I think someone asked a question that I think we both would be good answering, which is, um, how do you stay so positive? Cause I think we're both kind of like optimistic and positive, yeah. but obviously you, you know, you kind of said it already, but is there, how do you in, in the world of today? which I feel is we're bombarded with a lot of negativity and obviously like people are going through very negative situations. Are you naturally more a positive person and do you do anything to help you stay positive? Um, 
I think I am naturally a pretty optimistic person. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily positive, yeah. <laughs> but but um um I do always feel like um there's more to the mm -hmm. story, yeah. Than maybe like the terrible things that we see. You know, there's a little more. Um, right. So staying present in the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, as hard as it is, is, yeah. is one way that I'm able to sort of like ground myself when the world is spinning out and it's, it yeah. all sounds really terrifying. Like, right. you know, none of that's actually happening right here in, right. in my little world. I like that and a so, lot. Yeah. And so I, I will do something that is fun, uh, for me and for my kids. So like we'll paint or, I'll yeah. play makeup with my baby. My baby girl likes to put makeup on the both of us. Yeah. Um, um, and it's like when you're getting your hands dirty and like, you know, hands on faces and stuff, it's very, yeah. very grounding. You can't not yeah. be in that moment. Um, I like that a lot though. That was really, I like that line of just like, it's not happening right here, right now in my little mm -hmm. circle. That's really good mm -hmm. advice. I like it a lot. What about you? I just, yeah, I mean, kind of the same thing, but I just think I've always had, like you, I'm an optimistic person by nature. And I just think I've, there's always, no matter where you are in life, you could have all the money in the world. You could have no money. You could, you know, no matter where, you, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, bad things are going to happen to you around you. Mm -hmm. It's just, that's life. So mm -hmm. they're going to happen regardless. So I just don't put all my focus on those things. It's more like bad things are happening, but look at all the good that I have going on instead yeah. of look, I feel like look that's all... sort of in the same yeah. vein. Yeah. I just yeah. feel like there, there's always bad things. So I could focus on that yeah. or I could focus on these good things and just deal with the bad things as they come. It's very true. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think, Parse yeah. Out. <laughs> yeah. And that's good advice at staying, like ground yourself a little bit and stay in the moment yeah. for a moment. And yeah, that's really, that's cool. Well, Shauna, I want to thank you so much for telling me your story, telling us your story and um, sharing. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sharing all about that. I learned a lot <laughs> and um, I appreciate that you. Did I blow your mind? Me. You kind of did. It, <laughs> it was my pleasure. Did. Thank you for having me on and and listening to the story because it's crazy. I, it was a little crazy. <laughs> so <laughs> my jaw was dropping at a couple points. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I... guys, thank you so much for listening to Keeping It Normal. I will list all of Shauna's social. So go give her a follow. And I will see you next week. Bye. Bye.